YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back there was a couple of trades that went down earlier today and there are definitely more coming before the start of the season we are here to figure out who is next who are the most likely NFL trade candidates and which teams are they most likely to land on that's what we're breaking down in this video Let's get to it. Jaguars defensive lineman Roy Robertson Harris is a name to watch. Not a whole lot of chatter about him right now, but I'd watch out for him. Not going to guarantee anything, but a legit trade candidate. Uh, one that I am a fan of if a team acquires him. I guess always depending on the price, but man, he can give a good team a boost because it's a solid experience interior defensive lineman, and there are some good playoff caliber teams that are in need, maybe even desperately in need of an interior defensive lineman. Jags could keep him because he's a good player. You know, bringing in Arc Armstead this offseason could push him out. They can get some decent value back for him as well because similar style players and Armstead's better and he has a little more to his game. Like if they need him to slide out and rush off the edge and if they want to put Walker inside at three technique, which I think we'll see some reps of exactly that. Because remember, Josh Allen's always off the edge. Um, there's just more of a variety you can do then with, with uh, Armstead over Robertson Harris. And I think... On first down to start the games, I think Armstead will start over Robertson here. Somewhat of a similar player, but a good player here. Man, my favorite landing spot for Roy Robertson Harris is the Texans. But big issue there, division rivals, bo both contending for the AFC South. But we are seeing more and more division or division rival trades now more more now than ever really it's it's before it was like it's not going to happen now it's like it is a we saw Jahan Dotson earlier today actually uh but this one's a little trickier because it would boost the Texans so much that the Jags I wouldn't recommend it from the Jacksonville Jaguars I wouldn't recommend it but a great fit for the Texans like really the only thing they need interior defensive line help they kind of struck out on some guys including our Armstead why it's a pretty good fit here as well because that was kind of the replacement um Harris's replacement I should say so I love that fit I think they would be interested but will the Jags actually they would probably need a little more of a premium on a draft pick you know third round pick that's rich that's pretty rich um, the Dolphins. I love the Dolphins. I mainly have a big three here, but I put five as my favorite landing spots. The big three for me, in my opinion, are the first three listed Texans because the fit, the need, I think they'll be interested. The Dolphins, they're trying to, they're not going to be able to replace Christian Wilkins, but they need somebody in there to help them out because they improved the secondary. They have a bunch of pass rushers when healthy. We know the offense is good. Man, they just need an interior defense alignment, you know, uh, an, an extra one in there. So they could be interested in the Browns. The Browns are always, you know, Andrew Barry always making deals, always looking to get better. And they could use someone that has a little bit more pass rush uh, from the interior to his game next to Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, you know, Michael Hall dealing with a little something off uh, off the field too as well. Not that he was a little bit of a raw uh, prospect that I did like um, and still could. We'll see what goes on with that. Those are my main teams. The Chargers need him. I, they're a little quiet. I keep thinking they're going to sniff around on this player, that player, like free agents trade, and they don't. Uh, but they need interior defense linemen bad, more than anybody. More than anybody. So they should be interested. Uh, and the Bengals could use somebody. They might be in the market for more of a nose tackle, perhaps, because it feels like they have a bunch of D tackles to me. Um, you know, and They want to stop the run a little better. I mean, this would help. This would definitely help. Uh, and I put them as a favorite landing spot for that reason. And some wild card landing spots. The Lions, you know, could always be looking to get better. Could add someone else in there. But yeah, would he be a rotational player for them? That's kind of the only thing. Um, the Panthers could use somebody next to Derek Brown. And I put the Vikings maybe that three four end spot. Do they cut? You know, in a, in a scenario where they move like, hey, we can get him. We'll move on from Bullard. He's a cheap contract. We sign on a one year. Those are more wild card spots. Uh, I, I love these landing spots up here. I think he should be talked about more as a realistic uh, trade candidate. And one of those teams would uh, benefit big time uh, from, for, you know, from at, adding RRH here. So that, that would, it, it, he's one to watch. It definitely, if you're one of those teams up there and, you know, you should probably be rooting for, for them to get a guy like this. That'd be really big. Like if, the Texans, the Dolphins, the Browns, the, the chart, now any of those teams, like it gives them a serious boost, all potential playoff teams. So definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, Damian Pierce, we touched on him in past videos, but I, I do think he's a very legit 
trade candidate. I, this video is about who is most likely to be dealt and where will they go. Uh, I watch it because it felt like the new staff last year for the Texans didn't love him as much as we thought they would. It maybe just didn't fit that scheme as much, you know, as the, the previous one did. And they have a list of running backs in there now led by Joe Mixon. So if a team offers up like a fifth round pick, maybe even a six, that seems a little too cheap. Maybe you just keep him in that, in that case, but maybe they would deal him. We've talked about the Cowboys in the past. I feel like he'd instantly be the starting running back on the Cowboys. That could be a good fit as well. Um, you know, again, he fit more of like the gap, you know, power running style. And then it was more of a West coast outside, you know, a lot of outside zone, uh, the quicker running backs fit that. Uh, that's what the Texans kind of turned to. But the Browns were always that, and they kind of turned to more of the power running style last year. I remember Nick Chubb hurt. Uh, Foreman ended up being okay, a little bit of a scare earlier in um, practice or training camp a few weeks ago. Uh, Pierre Strong, I think, went down in practice. I saw went down in practice um, said today or yesterday. Everything's a blur right now, but... Uh, you know, Nick Chubb's still injured, so they could definitely use another piece in there. In the Giants, I think it'd be a pretty, I mean, back with Singletary. Um, you know, Tracy had a little bit of a scare, but I think more so the the Cowboys. I think Cowboys are far and away the top landing spot than probably the Browns. And some wild card landing spots. The Bengals would be a fit. They might be good to go with Zach Moss and Chase Brown, guys like that. Uh, Minnesota could use one. It may not look like it on paper because they have Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler, and they are in the wild card landing spots for a reason. You know, I'm not counting on it, but Aaron Jones has injury concern, and Ty Chandler, you kind of worry about the pass protection from him, but he is an explosive runner. Uh, the Chargers, I think, would fit, you know, hardball style and could use another one, but they do have a number of backs that can play. Uh, and the Raiders, I think, would be an upgrade over Madison and a good complementary like, split with Zemir White, but I feel like they just want to give the full load to Zemir White. So mainly looking at, I'd say, the Cowboys and the Browns and maybe the Giants, and there's some wild card spots um, that you know there's some sort of percentage chance on it happening there. Uh, next, uh, James Bradbury, and most people will say he's going to get cut. And I'm going to say 50-50. I think there's, you know, he's either going to get traded or cut to me. Uh, but I put him on a serious trade candidate watch here, watch list here because even though everyone's saying he's going to get cut because the He's a veteran experienced corner and they made the con they adjusted the contract where it's pretty affordable, obviously, for other teams. So it's kind of low risk for other teams. Uh, you know, just ride with them this year, move on after this year, uh, you know, unless you want to redo the deal and get them back for cheap. Uh, but some teams that could definitely use a corner, the Colts badly need a corner. You get an experienced one here. I think he can fit their scheme. They're trying to run cover three and man. Uh, the Raiders, uh, the Raiders could be in the market for a corner. Jack Jones looks pretty good, and it's a little bit up in the air with some of the young corners. After that, um, you know, Nate Hobbs obviously can play inside or outside. They could be looking for a veteran. Um, we will see. And the Bengals could use one. They got a lot of solid young players in there, but they have some durability concerns, and there's no like sure thing. Uh, I'm pretty confident with Cam Taylor Britt, but. They, they could be looking to add someone. I think he would end up kind of reviving his career a little bit, not going back to being great or super, super good, but in that scheme. And I would like to fit with the Chargers. Seems like a good you know good scheme fit there. And they could use another corner. We'll see who they start opposite Asante Samuel Jr. Wild card landing spots with Gannon in, in Arizona. I think you got to throw them in there, but they do have a, number, a good number of young corners. Uh, 49ers could use another one. I, they might be in the more, more of them as a deeper wild card. They might be in the more more in the market of a depth corner. Uh, Broncos could use another. They could use a guy that can compete to start. Uh, but they got a couple guys that could step up opposite of Sertan. Uh, and the Giants could use another possible starter. But those are more of the wild card spots. I really like. I really like the teams I listed above. I in the Colts and the Raiders mainly, but the Bengals and the Chargers. And for all these in this video. It could be a surprise, and no one I listed uh, could trade for them. It's definitely possible. There's a lot of surprise trades. The in-division trades, the in-rival um, you know rival trades are happening more and more these days. So, uh, But Bradbury, cut or trade? Uh, I think he'll be moved within this next week, or any could happen any second, could happen while I'm recording a lot of these guys. Uh, but, 
Yeah, I think most people are counting on cut. Definitely possible. I think a trade's a little more likely than what people are saying. But again, about around 50-50 there for Bradbury in the Eagles. The Eagles just made a deal for a Dotson today. Could they get something small back for trading uh, their corner here, James, James Brad, Bradbury? We'll see. Uh, Derek Forrest, I mentioned him in a past video. I haven't heard anything about him being traded. I'm just kind of using my head here. Um, on, on him because he's a very solid young safety with some good play in the past dealt with a little bit of injury last year uh, but he had some good years him and Cameron Curl the duo split safety scheme a lot of cover four cover two and Dan Quinn comes in there and he already you know he let Cameron Curl walk who was really good for them and uh, moving on from other guys they traded dots in today but mainly focus on defense and it's you know why because of scheme uh, Dan Quinn is a uh, is a man coverage guy and, and Forrest and guys like Curl who let walk they bend zone coverage guys and Forrest is second string on the depth chart currently and he's I think he's deserving of being a starter so move another guy they can move on from they like collecting picks because they view themselves as the team of the future maybe it may be a quick turnaround like they might be able to compete a little bit this year but hey maybe become a playoff team next year with a lot more draft picks that's kind of the the angle they're taking right now uh and they took it before the draft as well i think they did a really good job in the draft getting off topic but not really because they're trying to add more picks and it's a guy you get something you know out of him uh, I think it'd be a phenomenal fit with the Jets. I hesitated to put him in the favorite landing spots because I think the Jets, they're not valuing the safety position a ton. Everything else around the safety position, like everything else is going to make it better. Everything else is stacked. Uh, they they probably feel like they're set. I think Forrest would arguably be their better, you know, maybe best safety, second best safety on that team. I think it'd be a really good fit in that scheme. Uh, but we'll see. The Giants, I think he would fit well with Tyler Newbin, their rookie, who, who's looking pretty good. Uh, but they do have other options. Uh, but another split safety scheme. That's you know that's why you know Newbin fits there. Shane Bowen likes to run the split safety scheme. The Bills do as well. Uh, it's going to depend on Mike Edwards because he's dealing with an injury and he's supposed to be a starting safety or a key impact. But dealing with a little bit of injury, but he's saying he's supposed to be good to go by week one. We'll see. I did like the draft pick of Cole Bishop, just not hearing a ton about him right now. They added Kareem Jackson, a little older, nothing guaranteed with him. Um, you know, Taylor Rapp's going to start, I believe. Uh, you know, I, I think most of us out there, our money's on that. Uh, so they could, and they run a lot of, in the past, they've run a ton of cover too, but I think they're trying to gear away from that because they got predictable. But that's, if I think cover two, like over the last five years, like which team do I think of first? I probably think of the Buffalo Bills. So uh, he would fit that. Not going to fit only that, but I, so it's, it just depends on if they still think they need another safety. And I'll put the Broncos up there. Uh, that's kind of a thinner spot on their roster. So they, they could add him, but my favorite fits the Jets. I, I just going to guess that they think they're set. That's why it's a tricky one. There's none that are like, yes, that team is a great fit. And they're probably going to look to trade for him. That's the, that's a problem with Forrest right now for me. Um, I have my favorites in terms of fits, but are, is there a team dying to do it? In a wild card landing spot, you may be confused about the Titans because they've added a bunch of safeties, some veteran safeties, especially recently. So right now it doesn't feel like they need him. But Chris Harris is on the staff there, and he was on the commander staff defensive back coach uh, when Forrest had his really good season, so he was part of his development. So he has to have a say on him. And, you know, what if the Titans, we see it all the time, they bring in a veteran guy, you think it's a really good signing, like a Jamal Adams, like a Quandre Diggs, and, hey, they didn't, they brought him in, they didn't look that great, they're going to move on from him, he's going to be a surprise cut for the season. I'm not counting on that at all, but it's a possibility. I think the Chris Harris connection um, – you know, had me put the Titans up there, wild card landing spot for a reason. Uh, Pittsburgh using our safety. The problem is he probably wouldn't start week one uh, for them. But uh, KZ could he go down injured again? You know, you don't. Hopefully not. But you know, so they could use someone else. Uh, they're trying to run more cover too. I think it'd be a good fit. And the Saints were looking at Justin Simmons, so I threw them on here. But it's a totally different type of safety. Uh, but maybe they're just looking for a safety in general. But more of a wild card landing spot for those reasons. Next, uh, kicker, kicker alert. We don't do this often, but uh, we, we saw Cade York get traded today, earlier today. 
uh, to from the Browns to the Commanders. Commanders desperate for kicker help. It's brutal out there. Cade York kind of struggled the last go he had with the Browns, uh, and they brought in a replacement last year. It worked well, so they traded him. Uh, but here's another one I'd say to watch for. Braden Narvison kind of come out of nowhere of the Titans. He is kicking very well in preseason right now, and we saw quite a few kicker trades at this time last year, the Titans being one of them for Nick Folk, and that's why he's on here because Nick Folk is very solid. Um, so, or do, does he win the job and they get rid of folk? I, it's kind of up in the air to multiple teams. I, I'd imagine they keep the veteran, but multiple teams could use a kicker. We saw multiple, some of them were surprising, some not last year at this time. So I think it's possible somebody throws them, a, you know, instead of the Titans cutting him, Hey, maybe we hold on him to the last second. We can get something, uh, can't rule the commanders out, even though they trade for Cade York, I mean, if he comes in and misses a bunch of kicks, uh, maybe they give a good, it was a conditional pick. So they don't lose anything. So they do the same thing here. He might be a little more expensive, but we'll see. Uh, Panthers, do they think they can get an upgrade younger, better over Pinheiro? Packers have a kicker battle going on right now. It just happens that neither are that good. I'd say Carlson still has upside, but, you know, maybe. So could they? And then the Bills have Bass, who like, took a little bit of a step down last year, but could they look for a younger Maybe okay, that'd be a little more of a surprising one, but I watch out. There was a kicker trade today, there was a few at this time last year. I'd watch out for another one. This is the guy that I'm highlighting here. Uh, the Titans likely backup kicker doing some damage in preseason. Uh, we have to talk Brand about Brandon Ayuk, it's annoying, it's lasting forever. We'll touch on it real quickly. I put San Francisco on favorite landing spots because I kind of been gearing towards he probably stays with the Niners and it was kind of feeling more and more like that recently. But the longer it goes, it's like is he going to stay there, or he's just not? They're not reaching a deal. Like they can't tweak it enough to reach a you know a contract extension agreement. Uh, and everyone's you know thinks the Steelers, the Steelers, the Steelers. It really feels like it's the Niners or the Steelers. But today, you know, staying with the Niners or going to the Steelers in a trade, and that I think the offer is still out there from Pittsburgh. I, I truly believe. But today, Jahan Dotson gets traded from the Commanders to the Eagles. And, you know, the, the, the commanders didn't really feel like Dotson was a great fit. They got something for him. That, and that feels like now they may need a receiver, though. That's kind of the only downside of that trade. But are they opening up a spot for Brandon Ayuk, who really his first choice where he wants to play is actually the commanders, not the Steelers, not the Niners, the commanders. We, knew, we know it's not the Patriots or the Browns. That was already proven. The commanders. So could it be, people ask me this on Twitter, it's possible. I'm going to say it's under 50%. I think they're kind of more focused on the future. My take on that is you could be part of the future, but they're, they're kind of focused on gaining picks rather than losing. But they do want to compete this year. But I do think they like you know, Luke McCaffrey and um, Deami Brown, kind of the under-the-radar guys to step up uh, next to Terry McLaurin. But right now it does feel like they could use another receiver so they were pretty much out a few weeks ago of this. And maybe, maybe are they back in? Are they cooking something up with the Jahan Dotson deal? I'm going to say my money would be on no, but it's a possibility. So we had to talk about it here, but let's move on. Uh, we got a twofer here. We got Dorian Thompson Robinson, Browns backup quarterback, second year guy out of UCLA, or Tyler Huntley. We've talked about both in the past. More recently talked about Tyler Huntley. I think they look to trade one of these guys. They have Deshaun Watson, and they have Jameis Winston. And they want the, another one. They want a third one. That's a pretty good trio there just in case of a Watson injury. You don't need four of them. They, they stockpile them because of injury concern and because they some trade bait here. So I think they trade one of these guys. Uh, I'd watch out for both. I've been preaching Huntley. Uh, DTR possibility as well. He looked really good last preseason. Uh, I put the Vikings up here. This is where it's a little tricky. I do not like the Vikings for Tyler Huntley. I think Tyler Huntley's better than DTR, by the way, right now. DTR probably has more upside. But I think they're two totally different type of quarterbacks, even though they both have legs, they're athletic. They're two totally different type of quarterbacks to me. DTR will fit the Vikings. I do not see Huntley fitting the Vikings in O'Connell's system. Also, the Vikings were very high on Dorian Thompson-Robinson in the draft. They really wanted him. They missed out. They had to take Jaron Hall, you know, third-string quarterback for them right now. I, they would rather have DTR if they can trade something small. I don't, I don't think they're going to trade. Uh, they're not going to win a bidding war if there's teams trying to throw stuff at him. I mean, he's not going to go for a super high price if it's DTR. So we'll see. Um 
you know, if they make a move for a quarterback, if they just go with Darnold, Mullins, and Hall, that's very possible. They're all in on Darnold right now. Uh, Chargers, I think the Chargers, it could be interesting either, but I think more likely Tyler Huntley, uh, back, uh, they, they're in need of a backup behind Herbert because they need to upgrade their backup and because Herbert's dealing with a little bit of foot situation, not overly worried, obviously. Uh, but in Huntley also fits that system, that scheme with Greg Roman in there. Put the Bills because the Bills are dealing with uh, you know some injuries. Trubis- Trubisky's hurt. It's not the best, not the best backup in the world, anyways. Uh, but he, they want him to be the two if he's healthy. You know they brought in Anthony Brown, who's not the answer. Um, Danucci, who's not the answer. I think Huntley would be an upgrade over Trubisky even, and he's hurt. DTR would kind of be. I think they would keep him as their third quarterback or second while Trubisky's injured and he has some upside learning from Josh Allen. I think that makes sense. The Packers, I haven't heard anything about them looking for a quarterback. I think they need to look for a quarterback. Their backup situation is awful. We see that in preseason. It's really, really bad. Um, I mean, Pratt's just a rookie, so you can't like label him right now, but he does not look anything near because he was like almost like a felt like a pro ready, like relaxed pocket passing guy. He looks really like flustered out there. I mean, it's such a small, small, small sample size. Can't label him yet, but uh, but Clifford's supposed to be their second string, which he, he does not look good to me either. I think they badly need a two. I think they can practice squad Pratt and cut Clifford and trade for one of these guys, and they don't want to trade too much because it's just a backup. They count on love being the guy all year. I think they would be more interested in DTR possibly. Wildcard, the Giants, uh, Daniel Jones, May not be the guy. Drew locked in with a little bit of injury. Didn't look good in his one preseason game, you know. But I put him in wild card because they they do like Devito as well. So I don't know if they're looking for a guy. Uh, there's reports that they're not, but you can't fully believe that stuff. And I put the Steelers in there in a the wild card because the quarterback situation hasn't looked great. Feel like they're missing Mason Rudolph, even though they still do feel like, and I'm sure it is. Russ is an upgrade, but isn't looking great right now. It's a little bit of a wild card, but they do have to trade the Browns, who is a division rival, but more possible. Uh, these days and one more which is a two for the Texans uh, Akuda or Jeff Akuda or CJ Henderson they could look to trade one of these guys uh, they could keep both uh, they could cut one they're not gonna I don't think they would cut Akuda if they kept one cut one I think they would keep Akuda cut Henderson I'm not saying that's gonna happen but I don't see them cutting Akuda but there's some percentage chance on that happening uh, but I think they can. My money would be on looking to trade one. If we can trade one, that would be pretty good, and we'll keep the other one. If we can't, maybe we'll just keep both. Just good depth corners. Maybe we'll just keep both. Um, and I mean, the other issue is: is anybody going to trade for C.J. Henderson where he's at in his career? Conditional pick, maybe. Somebody would definitely trade for Akuda, though. A lot of landing spots for these guys because they're really cheap, and these are guys that are. A lot of teams need depth corners. And if you need a depth corner that can possibly start, Akuda could be your guy. I like the Chargers. I think they need a corner. Akuda could fight for a starting job. I just think him, uh, elite Big Ten player, Harbaugh being there, that's kind of what I was thinking there. Cincinnati could use uh, either, you know, probably a key depth guy. Uh, we know the Colts, you know, I think the Texans would help them out with something like this, even though it's a division rival. We know they could use another corner. They'd probably be more interested in Akuda than Henderson. They kind of already have a bunch of Hendersons on their team. Not all of them are like that. I mean, Kenny Moore's a stud, obviously, but and there's guys that are better than Henderson on that team, but probably more so in getting a starter in like a, a Kuda who could be a starter. Steelers are in the market for some serious depth. They're lacking depth. Uh, they had their starters in Joey Porter Jr. and Dante Jackson. Uh, the Bucks need some. They're lacking serious depth as well, and they're set with their starters, but they badly need depth. So I kind of I listed teams that badly need depth and a guy that possibly could start for them. That's kind of the teams I'm looking at here. The Niners I think could use some depth rather than a starter. Uh, the Giants could as well. Chiefs could use some depth. They're really good at, uh, at developing guys. You got some guys that were super high upside in college and haven't worked out. Hey, maybe a pretty good spot to go. Raiders sound like they could be looking for a corner. I think kind of a go big or go home and they'd be more interested in Bradbury and the commanders could be looking for some key depth as well. Almost want to listen more teams. There's a ton of teams that could use a guy like that, you know, cheap, young, athletic upside, like main backup for us. If we need him to start, it could work out. Like it's not a, it's not bad. So um, that's where I was at with those guys. Haven't really heard much chatter about that. I'm just looking at the rosters, um, you know, and they definitely want to keep depth. So they definitely keep somebody, one or both. Uh, but they look pretty set. They're definitely set with their starting corners. Stingley's uh, you know, rising star. Uh, sounds like they got one with uh, Kamari Lasseter as well, who can also play nickel. But they got a bunch of guys that can play in the, in the nickel. 
Um, you know, Kings in there right now. Jimmy Ward's a free safety slash nickel. So they're kind of set with the starters, it feels like. But Akuda does have that potential to play for them. Um, I think when they signed Henderson, it was more of guys, a raw prospect. It still kind of is. He was coming out of Florida. Um, D'Amico Ryan's really good coach. Let's work with them, see if we get something. So if they keep him, if they no hesitation, they keep him, that might be a pretty good sign that they, they feel like they could, um, you know, do something with them possibly. So we will see, but we have a bunch of trade videos that are still very, um, you know, worth watching right now on the channel. This one was mainly focusing on the most likely trade camps. I was happy to mention some new ones as well and their landing spots. In my opinion, we've been pretty accurate with those in the past, but there's always surprises. I do love the surprises. Dotson going to the Eagles earlier today was a little bit of a surprise, but we did mention Dotson as a surprise trade candidate. So I'm glad we got on that, but yeah, check out those other trade videos. We had other, other videos covering the NFL on the channel. Uh, in just a couple weeks, our in-season content starts our weekly picks uh, picks against the spread and a lot more power rankings. So join us for all that. Join our picks league. We got prizes. Link pin in the comments for that. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.